Hi, my name is Steve Kinsley. I'm the Chief Wackadoo at Wackadoo Information Systems. Today we're going to talk about the daily grind of using contract to close. Now, in normal usage, normal day-to-day, -day, the daily grind, uh, there are three things you're going to do. You're going to first walk in and check your hot list. You're going to see what's late, what's got to be done next. Second, you're going to look for your new contracts in your inbox. And third, you're going to work your list. Now, there are a couple other things that we're going to talk about at the end of this, but let's jump in. So when you first log in, you get to the active contracts page. Today's hot list is right below that. Now, this is going to be filtered, as most pages are, by what's selected. So, for example, if I wanted to, I could select the Camacho Sherman Vincent contract and come back to my hot list, and I would only see 37 items. I'm going to unselect that and I'm going to come back and we see that we've got 453 different things that are sitting here that are either late or pending. Well, I'm going to jump to the end of the list because it's sorted by task date and we see that we've got dates that go all the way back to January of this year. So let's jump down to the end. And this is more representative of what you might see. You might have a couple things that are red. You shouldn't because that means that you missed something. Um, and you can mark these as complete right here if you want to. So you can go tick, tick, tick. Um, if you need to fire off an email to do that, you can click on there and that will pop up your, your populated template uh, with all of the client information. Uh, make sure that the attorney has all of the invoices, that kind of thing. Uh, you would clean these things up. Remember, red means it's late. Purple means it's pending. It's coming up in the next couple of days. And those are the things that you need to look at. The only things that you'll see on this list are things that have task start dates. It doesn't show up on this list unless it has a task start date. That's the only way we can tell you whether it's going to be late or not. So the first thing you do in the morning, you come in, you take care of your red stuff and your purple stuff. You get caught up and that means that you're good to go. You don't have anything that's urgent that's going on. The second thing that you're going to do is go look for new contracts that have been submitted by your agent, by a coworker, or maybe even you started putting it in yourself. Now there's a whole other video on adding new contracts. I'm not going to get into the details of this. Um, first step is to fill it in and save it and to, and to put that information in. The second step is to come back into it, assign it a set of tasks and then to approve it because you might at this point reject it somebody might you may have an agent who submitted something and it makes absolutely no sense you would then give them a call up and you would figure out how that works so you may or may not approve that so first step hot list second step inbox third step you're going to go to your active contracts list and just start working the list now, there are two other pages that are available in the system that aren't widely used. They are the work in progress page and the calendar. We're going to take a look at that. Um, let's take a look at the calendar first. So we come down to the calendar and we look and we see everything or just deadlines. Deadlines are a particular kind of task. Um, everything is anything that has a start date on it, anything that can be put on a calendar at a date and time um, that you could possibly see. As opposed, and that could be any kind of task. It could be a, it includes deadlines. It's a superset. Now you will see the same red and purple kinds of things that you had going on there. Um, it's a view into it. Um, it's not terribly widely used, as I said. The other thing that we can look at is the work in progress page. Hi, since this video was shot, we have made significant changes to the software. First of all, the software is intended to answer the question, what do I have to do next? And it answers that by providing multiple views the way that people doing the transaction coordinator job find useful. Three pages that weren't useful at all were the compliance page, the deadlines page, and the dependencies page. Nobody thought about looking at their data that way, so we removed those. Second, the work in progress page, while a good idea, didn't go deep enough. So we split that out into five separate pages and we're going to talk about those. What we've done is we've listed things by where they fall in sort of that flow through from new contract to due diligence to closing or, with, or listing, uh, which is sort of a separate path. That's the second thing. 
The third thing that we're going to talk about is how to work with a team of people. This is brand new functionality. You have the ability to assign contracts or tasks to an individual user on your team. So let's start at the top with the work in progress. If you look over on the left side, well, uh, you see that I have a new contracts tab. The, little, the icon is the same for all of them. Due diligence, loan processing, closings, and listings as well. We're going to look at the Barker Sosa contract, and we're going to use that as our example. Now, if I come across here, I notice that, okay, I've got some things that are blank because those tasks don't exist on a seller contract. I don't need to send mail to email to the lender. Um, and there are some things that are checked and some things that are unchecked. So have I put the dates on the calendar? Oops, yes, I have. That just marked it complete, just like it would have on the task list page. And in fact, we'll see that in a little bit. Have we received the DD check? Uh, now we have. And oh, did we get the receipt for it? Yes, we've gotten the receipt. And you think, oh, I've checked all of those things. It should come off of this list. Remember, this is a subset of the tasks that are on your task list for being in new contract state. So let's go click on that and go right to the task list and we see new contract is 93% complete. We come down, we go up, oh, DD fees are only 29% complete because there's other work that needs to be done. Well, okay, so I have to mark these things as complete. So we go through and we do that and voila, now new contract is 100% complete. And if I go up to my new contracts work in progress page, you see that that one's gone. Guess what? It shows up on due diligence. There's Barker Sosa. We go through and do that. Same thing happens here. Is there a DD request or contract amendments or anything like that on a seller contract? No, there's not in the particular task list templates that we're using. I go to loan processing, I see the same thing. There are some tasks here that have to, okay, I'm going to order the appraisal. It's complete. And now I get the loan approved. And now I'm going to I'm clear to close and go, wait, but it's still on there. So I go back in and I open that up and it takes me down to financing. Here we go. I'm on financing and I didn't verify self-funding. Nope and I have send contract to lender. Again, you wouldn't do both of these. If you verify self-funding, you wouldn't have these other tasks, or if you had these other tasks, if it's a cash sale, you don't need to do all the lender stuff. But now financing is complete, and if I go up to loan processing, we see that it's gone. However, it's still there on due diligence. You're starting to get the idea for how things flow through. So now I'm gonna go mark up the due diligence as complete, Actually, I'm not going to yet. I'm going to go right to closings. Oh, due diligence first. There it is. It's still due diligence. Now I go down to closings. Closings is a special case. It's a little bit different. It's not just everything in that state. It's only a two and a half week window. So what closings does is it gives you a hyper focus on the ability to say what contracts have to be done immediately in the short term. Now you can look at the active contracts list and you can look at the, you sort by closing date and you can get the same kind of thing. However, this gives you a little bit more insight into some of the tasks that need to be done. It's a subset of the tasks, but this gives you that short view of, okay, my list is overwhelmingly long. Only look at that short list that I have now. It will tell me what's closing this week, the rest of this week, I should say, next week, or the week after on a calendar basis. So you can sort of plan out what's coming right now, what's coming next week, and what's coming after that. Now, it's also everything that's in the past. So right now we're at the end of August, and so I've got a couple of contracts that actually are in the past, but these are all within the, the two-week window from when I'm shooting the video. Again, randomly generated data, not logical uh, in terms of the sense on, on how it lays out. So let's go look at the Barker Sosa contract again. And I go in and say, okay, great. I'm going to take it up. Due diligence is now done. And you'll see that it came out of the due diligence list. It's no longer in loan processing. It is still on my closings list. So you start to see how that flow goes through, how you can kind of drop through and do that. It's, it's an improved work in progress view of the pipeline 
your overall pipeline is the active contracts page. It's everything that you've got listed there. This is your whole work base going forward. So that's the an overview of the work in progress and the new split out on the pages that are available there. So took away pages. We did work in progress. Now the third thing is how to work with a team. So the first thing that you'll notice is that there is a staff members page listing the people who are on your team. In this case, I've got some fake users, fake names, uh, TV character names, and, and I threw myself in there just for good measure. Um, and so I am currently logged in as Joe Blow. Joe Blow is a director. That's the role that I have. Ralph Cramden is a manager and Ed Norton is the staff member. So I could log in as any of these three people and show the difference of the menu and the things that are available to them. Again, you go to help, you go to user roles and it explains it in gory detail. Now, so what I'm gonna do is first explain how to assign a contract to someone. But I wanna show you where that is first. I go back to active contracts and you see this user ID column. Now, Ed Norton has been assigned three contracts. I've been assigned two. So if I go up to staff members and I select Ed Norton, all of a sudden I see, oh, those are the three that he's been assigned. And I can unassign him simply by clicking on the green or clicking on the X, or I can select them again and, and put them back in. He hasn't been assigned any specific tasks. It is possible to go into any given task go into the detail of that task and assign that task and all of its children, if it has children, to a particular user. So you could break it up that way. But it was deemed a little bit more uh, focused on doing it at the contract level. Again, uh, assigned tasks would show up here. Now, the difference between active contracts and my contracts is that as a manager or a director, I can see everything that's active. Any user has my contracts. These are the things that are assigned to me. That's it, that's all I'm gonna see there. It is a subset of active contracts. However, if I were to go into my contracts and I were to select one, I'll pick the buyer one, the Pratt Bradley one, you'll see the menu change. Now, if I was logged in as Ed Norton, a staff, the lowest level user, I would see a menu that looks like this because I don't get access to everything, just the stuff I can work on. And I can go into my task list, and I can go into the notes for the contract that I'm working on. I can see the vendor activity for this contract. So you get the idea that I can assign contracts and tasks to a person, and then when they log in, they will see them on their My Contracts page. And if you're a staff level person, that's all you'll see. That's what the new functionality is. First of all, you had those three pages taken out, compliance, deadlines, and dependencies. Second, the work in progress expanded greatly to give a much more fluid flow view of where the contracts are in your process. Third, the ability to assign contracts and tasks to individual users on your team. I'll send you back to the other video. Thank you. Select the contract and take me into the task page for that contract into that group and you'll see I've got 100% completion on everything above it. I got 75% completion on my closed contract and I'm working my way down and go, okay, generate final checklist report, send thank you, close out email to the agent and I can do that again. I can just pop that out here and that's gonna populate the template. Thank you for doing this, happy to work with you. Normal email template stuff and I'm gonna mark this as now I'm going to send the transaction invoice to the agent. And I do that, and I mark it complete, and I'm done with this contract. I've done everything that I need to do as a transaction coordinator. And you're probably wondering, okay, now, so what do I do? Well, it's very simple. You go back up to the active contracts page, and because you have that contract selected, you're looking at the detail for that active contract. And if you look in the corner here, you'll see that you've got status active. Well, all of the contracts in the active status page have that because it's a subset of this page down here, the contracts page. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna change that status. We hit edit, we pop up here, 
and we go closed. That simple. This is how you close out a contract. It saves all of the data, all of the text, all of the history, all of the notes, everything gets saved. You're just taking it off of your active contracts page. You can come back and look at this stuff later if you want to. So I'm going to hit save. And you'll notice that now I'm on the contracts page because when I unselect Molina KC Macias, I am on the contracts page where it lists the status as well. So I could have closed, active, terminated, all of these guys. If I come up to my active contracts page, you'll see that I've got only 22 now. So we had 23. We changed the status of that other one to move it out of the active contracts page. That's the basic daily grind of working with contract to close. You first check your hot list for things that are late or about to come due. You check your inbox for new contracts. Remember that you would have gotten an email notification as well when something was added to that. And third, you go work your list. And you've got a number of different ways that you can look at that list, either the work in progress or the calendar, or uh, just by going through your notes and, and knowing which ones that you want to work on next. Thank you very much for watching this video. We appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out to us as shown on the Contact Us page at wackadoo.info.